The conventional image of a Neanderthal is that of a gruff, stupid, and primitive caveman. A new study from academics at the University of Rocklaw in Poland aims to show that our Homo sapien cousin had cognitive abilities and was even creative. The human story is often told in stone. Hand axes, hearths, and flint blades mark the ingenuity of our ancestors. But sometimes it is not the tools themselves that speak loudest, but the scratches they leave behind intentional, deliberate, hauntingly human. Two such objects, dating to an ancient world of mystery and shadows, now challenge our understanding of Neanderthals. A bare bone carved in the dark recesses of Ziadowa Scala Cave in Poland, and a human skull incised with mysterious precision in Krapina, Croatia. Though silent, these bones whisper of ritual, of memory, and perhaps of symbolic thought, once thought exclusive to our own species. Neanderthals were expert toolmakers, but did they also use symbolism? This is the story of those marks, their making, their mystery, and what they reveal about the inner world of the Neanderthal mind. What makes this discovery so exciting is that these bones are dated to an astonishing 130,000 years ago, during the Eemian interglacial period, a time when Europe was as warm as it is today. The study, published in the Journal of Archaeological Science, contends that a 130,000-year-old bare bone with Neanderthal sculptures could be one of Eurasia's oldest known engravings. The bone, measuring four inches long with 17 marks, was discovered it in a layer dating from 115,000 to 130,000 years ago, and initially mistook the bone for a bear rib. In the 1950s, a fragment of a bear's radius bone was unearthed in the Ziadowa Scala cave in Poland's Czestochowa upland. Its significance went largely unnoticed until now. Re-examined with modern methods, including microscopy and computed tomography, this bone has emerged not only as a fascinating artifact, but also as the oldest marked object found north of the Carpathian Mountains, dating back to the Eemian interglacial some 130,000 years ago. The bone, which is broken at both ends, has a maximal length of 106.2 millimetres, a maximal width of 28.2 millimetres, and a maximal thickness of 15.6 millimetres. It belongs either to Ursus Arctos or to Ursus Spileus. Because of the poor preservation of the bone and the immaturity of the animal, the species cannot be conclusively determined. Nevertheless, some of the morphological features strongly favour the brown bear, according to the report. Etched into the surface are 17 incisions, each around 4 to 12 millimetres long. These are no butcher's scrapes, no incidental nicks from flint or claw. Instead, they show characteristics of careful, repeated engraving with a retouched stone blade. Each incision has been shaped with a particular motion, a repeated unidirectional stroke toward the engraver. The depth, angle, and even the orientation of the cuts suggest not only intention but the handedness of the individual, most likely right-handed. The creator also moved quickly, making swift, repeated incisions. The researchers discovered that the seventeen parallel patterns on the bone were most likely placed on purpose, as they repeat and follow an orderly pattern. As a result, the bone likely serves as a functional or ceremonial object rather than art. It is the oldest known Neanderthal engraving from Europe north of the Carpathian Mountains. Experiments Replicating the technique using middle Paleolithic tools reveal that this kind of engraving requires forethought and manual skill. The lines were not decorative doodles, they were patterned. Some ended in comma-shaped curves, evidence of deliberate touching up or refining of the cuts. The shape of the strokes, narrow at the entry and wide at the termination, demonstrates a complex engagement with the material, even implying that the engraver worked with the awareness of how the cuts would appear as a sequence. The fact that such a series of parallel incisions developed with the Neanderthals, and not previously indicates that they were a cultural activity with meaning and function, rather than the result of unconscious personal habits such as doodling. Although scholars are still unsure what the markings mean, the Ziadoa Scala cave incised bone demonstrates that Neanderthals used visual culture to encode information, which is a really human talent. But what did they mean? A symbolic interpretation is powerful but cautious. 
The bear, a creature of strength and mystery, had a profound place in many Paleolithic cultures. Traditional societies viewed bears as spiritual beings, often central to rituals of transformation and respect. The Neanderthals who carved the Dziadowa Scala bone may have seen the bear as more than food, as kin, guardian, or spirit. Perhaps the engravings were a gesture of reverence, a memorial, or an invocation. While we must not project too much, the deliberate, skilled, and patterned nature of these incisions leaves little doubt. This was purposeful action, not purely utilitarian, not merely experimental. A Neanderthal left his mark on the bone of a bear, and by doing so, on the very boundary between nature and culture. In Neanderthals, the structure and function of Broca's area, which is used for language and communication, is one of the most intriguing questions in paleoanthropology. While we can't examine soft tissues directly, we can infer quite a bit from fossil endocasts, impressions of the inner skull, brain asymmetry, and comparisons with modern humans. Neanderthals had a region in the left inferior frontal lobe that corresponds closely to Broca's area in modern humans, and it was well developed. Neanderthals had a region in the left inferior frontal lobe that corresponds closely to Broca's area in modern humans, and it was well developed. This suggests an ability for complex language and communication, including symbolic communication. 600 kilometers to the south, and yet within the same stretch of time, another enigma awaited discovery in a cave near the Croatian town of Krapina. The site, excavated in the 1899 by Dragutin Gorjanovic Kramberger, yielded the richest Neanderthal fossil collection ever found. Among these, the Krapina III cranium, a female skull, originally thought to show signs of cannibalism, became the focal point of a very different kind of mystery. However, life wasn't necessarily peaceful for the Krapina Neanderthals during this warm period 130,000 years ago. Gorjanovic Kramberger wrote that Neanderthals evidently did not coexist peacefully with their neighbours because our diluvial man was apparently a cannibal, judging by the fragments of charred skull and extremities. It is difficult to imagine that early man from Krapina enjoying the wealth of his hunt in peace and undisturbed. No doubt he was attacked on his territory from time to time by neighbouring hordes who may not have had such abundant hunting grounds. Neanderthals fell on each side, and the victors proceeded with the dead as they did with the catch from a good hunt. On the frontal bone of this Neanderthal skull, archaeologists found thirty-five parallel cut marks, extending from just to the right of the midline above the eyes to just left of the crown. These cuts are neither random nor functional. They are evenly spaced, averaging 5.2 mm in length and just over 1 mm apart, forming a narrow path across the upper forehead like a ritual scar or ceremonial tattoo etched in bone. Crucially, these marks differ in both form and placement from known evidence of scalping, butchery or defleshing. They are too shallow and too regular to represent muscle removal, and they are located in a region of the skull devoid of thick tissue. They were not part of any known post-mortem processing for practical ends. The mark's characteristics are not consistent with scalping, cannibalism, defleshing or other perimortem activities described for Neanderthals or modern groups. These marks represent a type of funereal behaviour yet to be documented in Neanderthals and suggest a kind of ritual treatment of the deceased. Their uniqueness is underscored by their exclusivity. None of the hundreds of other cranial fragments from Krapina show anything remotely similar. These are not the marks of violence, hunger or dissection. They are deliberate, possibly sacred, and so it seems that cannibalism may not have been the reason for the cut marks. As researchers concluded, the only plausible interpretation is that these marks were made perimortem, not long after death, and represent a symbolic act, a ritual, a funeral gesture, perhaps an attempt to honour or communicate with the dead, to mark the head of the deceased with lines of memory, mourning or spiritual passage. Perhaps it was to mark the number of years she had lived. Both the bare bone and the human skull reveal a shared story, not of violence, but of meaning. In both cases, the incisions were created not with haste, but with care. Experiments on the Ziadua Scala bone confirmed that the technique used involved a series of movements toward the engraver, 
each incision consistent in angle and depth. Similar methods were likely used on the Krapina skull, although the presence of thick lacquer has thus far hindered microanalysis. What binds these artifacts is not just their antiquity or precision, but their detachment from necessity. These marks were not made to extract meat, make tools, or scare predators. They were made to signify. The bare bone may have been an act of animistic homage, the skull a kind of post-mortem identity tag or passage rite. In both we glimpse not only craftsmanship but cognition, an inner world, a symbolic vocabulary, and possibly even emotional depth. The implications are enormous. For years, Neanderthals were dismissed as brutish cousins, clever with tools but devoid of symbols or ceremony. That myth has crumbled. Pigment use, burials, cave engravings and personal ornaments have all surfaced across Europe. The bare bone and the Krapina skull add to this expanding record of Neanderthal symbolism, but they also refine it. The bare bone shows symbolic expression not tied to death, but perhaps to myth or animal veneration. The Krapina skull shows symbolic behavior tied explicitly to the human body, a sign of respect, identity, or transition. These are not outliers, they are data points in a rising graph of Neanderthal mind. Nonetheless, these behaviors predate the arrival of modern Homo sapiens in Europe. This means Neanderthals developed symbolic behaviors independently, or more likely from our common ancestor. They were not mimicking. They were creating. In the silence of ancient caves, the dead do not speak, but their bones do. The engraved bare bone of Ziadua Scala and the cut-marked cranium of Krapina III remind us that Neanderthals, long misunderstood, were not merely survivors of an Ice Age world. They were thinkers, mourners, perhaps even believers. These marks, once seen as scratches, now stand as testimonies. They testify not only to the skill of a stone tool, but to the stirrings of a mind capable of more than survival, a mind capable of symbol, memory, and perhaps something sacred. Through these etched bones, the Neanderthals have sent us a message, and we are finally learning how to listen. Thanks for watching, and please let us know what you think in the comments, and also subscribe to the channel to learn more about the Neanderthals.